Good afternoon, I'm Gail Anderson. This is Mentoring Moments for Moms. Nice to have you with us today. A um, Couple of things I wanna bring you up to speed on are that this Thursday from 10 o'clock until 10.30, I'll be taking your questions on Periscope. So would love for you to write in. My email is in the uh, profile here in Periscope. Write in, let me know what those questions are. Otherwise, just join us and be part of it. Really excited to do that. The last time, it really lasted a long time. I'm hoping to keep this one between 20 and 30 minutes, but that doesn't give me much time to answer too many questions. So get your questions to me so that I can get them uh, answered for you. Really excited about that. So 10 o'clock this Thursday. Also next week, I will be in the lovely city of Pasadena with my grandkids having an absolute blast i know it brings back great memories because i actually started periscoping at the very end of march when i was in pasadena i get really even more motivated to talk about kid stuff when i'm with the grandkids it's absolutely wonderful so we're having nana camp next week and i want to be able to get on and share with you some of the ways i planned with my granddaughter what we're doing for nana camp so that should be a lot of fun but i've got a question for you how did your parents teach you about finances? Did you feel prepared when you left home? Did you know how to balance a checkbook? Um, could you write checks? Did you understand what a debit card was? Are these things that you learned from your parents? Okay, caught you live. Thank you, nice to have you. Um, okay, tell me about your experience. Did you get off on your own out of the house and all of a sudden fall flat on your face because you did not know how to manage finances? We talked yesterday about how to do that with kids up through say junior high. Today we're gonna to talk about older kids and even as you get out of the house, what kinds of things you learned or if you fell flat, it's just interesting to, uh, to hear your experiences. But yes, it was part of our schooling. Excellent. Was that homeschooling or was that at school, Crystal? Um, did you go to a Christian school? Did you go to public school? Now, back when I was in school, we learned nothing about any of that. Absolutely nothing. So, homeschooling, excellent. We did the same thing. That was part of our life skills course. They had to learn how to write checks, how to keep a balance in the check register, those type of things. But you know what, basically our kids need to know how to work hard because they're gonna earn money by working hard. They need to know how to be givers, whether that be to a church or other organization or to family or friends. This is an important subject to me. I fell flat on my face for sure out of high school. Well, I was fortunate enough to be able to have some training from my parents. They definitely taught me how to save. They taught me how to be a good consumer, to make good choices in purchasing. And as I shared yesterday, uh, a lot of the clothing options that we had were to make our own rather than just going out and buying clothes. If you like what we're talking about today, please tap on the screen, give me some hearts, and you can share this broadcast by just swiping to the right. And if you are, let's see, my dad bought me a snow cone stand business when I turned 15, and I had to learn a lot real quick. That's fantastic, wow, a homeschool business, that's excellent. But you know, that's how you learn those things is by experiencing them. So that's why I believe it's good to start your kids even when they're young, being able to have them earn money and know what to do with it. When they're young, a lot of it goes into savings. You can catch the replay on my scope from yesterday on that. We actually did percentages with our kids um, and that kind of continued all the way through. But the more responsible they are with their money, the more you can back off and let them take care of it on their own. And especially when they're getting to the point where they're 16 and they're going to have a regular job and getting regular paychecks, you wanna make sure that they have a good footing and that they use that money wisely. At 16, they often will be getting their driver's license. That's something they should probably pay for. If they're using the family car, then they're going to be contributing to gas. They're gonna to have to ask about using the car. Um, you, they might want to start saving for a car on their own, unless, of course, mom and dad purchased them a car on their 16th birthday. 
But these are things that are real life lessons and we can't leave it up to somebody else. We can't leave it up to the school and just hope that they learn these things. So mom and dad, I say it's our job and we start when they're very young. Again, review the replay from yesterday and I give you a lot of hints on that. I will also put a link in the description on YouTube with today's scope that will have some resources for you. DaveRamsey.com, who has Financial Peace University, which is a plan we went through probably 10 years ago. Absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend that for adults, teenagers. Um, there's also plans that he has, and that's what I've got in this resource list. He has um, a set, Financial Peace University for Kids. He also has a foundations course, which is for teenagers to help them learn about money and to help them learn the right way. So I feel like those are really important. It's so funny to think about kids that get out of high school, do not literally know how to write a check don't know how to keep a check register. Now actually balancing a checkbook you may not need to do these days. If you have some type of accounting system like Quicken or even Mint, your kids can use Mint. Showing unity in finance with your husband speaks volume too. Absolutely, absolutely. And the budgeting is a process that you need to do together. That's probably something we should talk about on another scope for sure. But a system like Mint will allow them to set up a budget and keep track on their budget and it will give them the responsibility of going on on a regular basis, categorizing their expenditures, making sure that they're staying with it the way they need to. So get them some type of a system. So there's some people, I'm not even sure that my husband knew how to balance a checkbook when he graduated from high school. So here we were in college, we got married and this is something he struggled with and it was real easy for me. I'd done it for a long time. I love finances, so I just did it. But that did create some trouble in our marriage, so he wound up learning and processing through all that and then went on to teach um, financial stewardship seminars, which was awesome. So as kids are earning, help them to have a budget and do that by percentages. Have a percentage that they're going to give or tithe. Have a percentage that they're going to save. And the amount that they save really depends on their needs. If they have big needs like late high school where they're responsible for their clothes, their shoes, gas in the car, maybe even insurance, these are things that need to be considered so then they can have that all apportioned out and budgeted. And then when they get off on their own, when they get married, they're going to have a leg up on that. Now, you may be sitting here, you've got little kids, you're thinking, what does this have to do with me? File this away and think about how these things can be applied. And again, look at yesterday's scope where I talked about what to do with younger kids. Um, what we did with our kids to kind of curb the whole driving thing was to have a contract. We had a driving contract for them. They were responsible for certain things. If they fulfilled those things, they got rewards. If they did not fulfill those things, there were consequences. For instance, if they got a speeding ticket, they had to pay the speeding ticket. They had to uh, pay all the increases in their car insurance, which they were responsible for car insurance anyway for themselves, but then they had to pay the increases, of course, which happened as a result. Yes, loved one yesterday, thank you. This is the time to start them, absolutely. Real DIY, give me your first name. Um, the other thing is that if our kids would go without a speeding ticket for six months, we allowed them to take money out of their savings account, which they really weren't allowed to do, and to spend that on whatever they wanted. Back then, for every six month period they went, over the space of two years, from 16 to 18, they were able to spend $75 from their savings account however they wanted. And for the most part, when money went into savings, it was not to be used for anything except later on when you get to a car or something like that. Uh, let's see, so this contract was something that we signed and they signed. It was agreed to, it was all in writing, and so there was no going back on it. These were the consequences, these were the rewards, so that's how we did it. Another thing I wanna mention, as far as getting your kids used to being responsible financially, is if they do live in your home, 
past 18. Danielle, welcome, the real DIY. I watched eight of your videos yesterday and learned so much. Thank you. I do enjoy just connecting with you moms. And you know what? It's a time in my life where my kids are older and I can see that some of the things I did helped and worked out. And so it's just my chance to share with all of you. So after the kids are 18, if they're starting into college that next fall or if they're staying home and working, it's good to have them pay some type of rent at home. And I don't mean an exorbitant amount, but something to start getting them used to a payment at the beginning of the month. It will also help them not only to be responsible, but to get out of the house maybe a little bit earlier. I mean, the longer they stay there, the more you may want to increase the rent because that's our goal, for our kids to go off, be physically, be physically responsible for themselves, and live on their own. We don't want them living in our homes until they're, who knows, 35 years old. So think about that having a small rent that you charge to them. And if you feel bad about that, then I say put it in a savings account for them. Don't let them know about it. And when they leave home, hand them back that money that they paid into you. That would be an awesome thing to do. So the plan is for them to move out and this encourages them. Thanks, Danielle. So that's about it for today. If you have any questions, be sure to email me. I, I welcome your emails. My email's in the profile. Also, my husband and I blog at kirbyanderson.com, and that link is in the profile as well. All of my um, scopes are saved on YouTube. You can either search Mentoring Moments for Moms or you can just look in the profile again for that link and you'll find all my scopes since the end of March. Um, hopefully I'm getting better at managing these scopes and better at managing the technology with it and all that. I do want to remind you again that this Thursday, 10 o'clock, I'll be taking your questions and answers. If you'd like to write me ahead so I can prepare, you'll be the first ones to get your questions answered. And if there is time as well to answer questions live for people, I'm happy to do that. We'll do that for 20, 30 minutes. Thanks. Um, the other thing is, again, next week I'll be in Pasadena doing Nana Camp with my grandkids. That will be an amazing time. I am in the central time zone, so you're two hours behind me in California. But that means next week I'll be scoping two hours later than I normally do. Um, it'll all depend on the kids' schedules. If I want the little ones involved in the scopes, I'll be scoping in the mornings. If not, we'll be scoping during their na nap time. But um, looking forward to Nana Camp. I've had it several times here when they lived here in Tulsa, and I'll be doing it again out in Pasadena next week. So lots of fun. So send me your questions and comments. I love to hear from all of you. Have a blessed day and have a wonderful time being a mom today.